with so many IT companies in the region, who do you choose? And how do you make sure to forge a partnership with an outsourced tech team that will last for as long as you need them? Hello, you're listening to The Smartest Software Outsourcing, a business podcast created to help business owners, CEOs, and CTOs get expert outsourcing advice and support. I'm your host, Frederick Joy, a Swiss entrepreneur and founder of a leading software development company in the Philippines, Arcanis. Are you planning to tie up a successful relationship with an offshore partner in the Philippines? Then you're in the right place. In today's episode, I will be sharing vital points when building long-term remote teams in this tropical paradise. Take it from me, as a Swiss entrepreneur who's been in this country for many years, your doubts about outsourcing software development teams in the Philippines may easily block off any hidden opportunities, growth, and success for your business. Let's get the ball rolling. So you've developed a killer SaaS, or your MVP is starting to get traction, or you just get fresh funding and you need to speed up the development of new features, but your in-house team is overwhelmed or they just lack some essential skill sets to efficiently pull it off in time. So you decide to bring in more experts. You try looking for them locally, but you can't seem to find anyone that would fit your specifications and within your budget. With some research, you've decided the best way to move forward is to get a remote team and from a country with the highest chance of seamlessly integrating with your in-house team. Then you turn to the internet and you read there's a wealth of IT experts in Asia. So you decided to check it out. Thanks Google. But with so many IT companies in the region, who do you choose? And how do you make sure to forge a partnership with an outsourced tech team that will last for as long as you need them? Well, you're in luck because we've put together a checklist along with several resources that can help you do just that. Ready to assemble a killer remote team and reap the benefits? Try our checklist below. First, figure out your real reasons for outsourcing. Before you even think about outsourcing, it's best that you first determine why you're considering going this route. Is it for exploring cost-efficient strategies and reinvesting your savings on other aspects of the business? Or do you simply want to have on-demand access to a wide range of skill sets? Well, if you're a startup with limited funds, of course you'd prefer that. Or perhaps you just want to speed up development while staying agile. Or you just want your in-house team to focus on your core competencies and leave the routine tasks to an outsourced but still trustworthy support. Once you figure this part out, then you'll know how and where to start looking for that right partner. If you don't know how or where to start, you may find some useful insights from the article Top 5 Reasons Companies Outsource Software Development that you can find on our blog. Second, know why the Philippines is a top outsourcing destination. Over the past years, the Philippines has become an excellent outsourcing destination. In fact, it has attracted several multinational companies such as Lexmark, JP Morgan Chase, IBM, Timex, Mercedes, NEC, Epson, Accenture, and Telstra. Many have not only opened offices in the country, a good many have actually relocated here a big part of important departments. Why, you ask? Well, the following reasons may have greatly influenced this fact. A. English proficiency and Western culture adaptability. The Filipino workforce is proficient in the English language and familiar with Western culture. In fact, the Philippines produces over 150,000 highly skilled technology experts every year. B. Top global BPO industry player. In the past decade, the Philippines has been a certified major player in the BPO industry, it has been recognized three times as offshoring destination of the year by the National Outsourcing Association, which is a UK organization now known as the Global Sourcing Association. And in 2018, Cebu City topped Holland's 100 best outsourcing destinations occupying the top 11. C. Outstanding service. Filipinos have been recognized for years and all over the world as incredibly hardworking service-oriented professionals with good work ethics and providing world-class service. Just try visiting any major city in the world and you'd probably find a dedicated Filipino nurse or teacher living there. D. Foreign investment friendly. If you're a foreign business owner in the Philippines, the Filipino people are not the only ones who'd make you feel welcome. 
The country itself has actually passed laws that grant investment and tax incentives to foreign businesses. It even has an agency primarily dedicated to supervise and help promote foreign investments in the country. E. Cost-efficient choice. Unlike in other countries, the cost of living here in the Philippines, especially in Cebu for us, is quite low, which is why the daily minimum wage is also low. The usual range is about actually around $11 a day, according to trading economics data and analysis. For us at Arcanis, we have been working with clients from around the globe, but especially from Europe and Australia. In fact, we've written an article about the 11 reasons why we're among the top choices for Australian clients when it comes to software development in the Philippines. Third, learn how to pick the right provider. Choosing your software development outsourcing can be a complicated and exhausting task. It involves a lot of actual legwork and a ton of your valuable time. With the right help, though, there's no reason why you can't find the right tech partner for you. For instance, with our ultimate guide to picking your software development outsourcing partner in 2020 that you can find on our blog, you will not only save precious times, but also have the confidence to successfully search for, validate, and engage a trustworthy software development outsourcing partner. Fourth, envision your ideal but realistic team. Choosing your outsourcing partner the smart way could be the most crucial step you could take. Keep in mind, however, that your tech partner can only bring so much to the table. A significant effort in making the partnership work should also come from you. To accomplish this, you need to determine some pertinent things beforehand. For instance, you need to first determine your skill set requirements, second, set realistic expectations, third, have a reliable technical advisor or consultant on board with you, fourth, ensure that you have similar culture and values, fifth, have a concrete long term plan. Whether you're assembling a tech team from scratch or simply augmenting your in house crew with expert support, you need to not only properly assess, but also follow the best practices to make the partnership work and for the long haul. Five, have a rock solid recruitment process. Undoubtedly, you'd want to hire the best people to work on your software development projects. Hiring talented, experienced professionals may cost you a lot, but then hiring amateur may very well cost you more down the road. For example, uh, rework, code refactoring, expensive training, etc. You see, expertise doesn't come instantly. It needs an investment of money and time. And if you hire people who haven't invested in themselves, then you'll end up with the responsibility to do so. So how do you ensure that you're getting the right people, especially in the tech industry? By establishing a thorough evaluation process and knowing how to avoid hiring bad programmers, of course. We have an article about this in our blog on how to avoid hiring bad programmers. Six, recognize your team's value and potential. Trust your distributed team as you would your core team. Don't hamper their efficiency by depriving them of crucial data because that would be detrimental to not only their productivity, but also your bottom line. Also be aware that your team alone is never fully responsible for the output. It will also help if you are proactive in managing your team. For more useful insights on how to efficiently see your team's true worth, you should check out our article, Four Things Your Remote Software Development Team Wishes You Knew. And seven, lastly, make sure you're aligned on culture and values. To achieve common goals, partners should not only have mutual trust, but also share the same core values. It is the same with tech partnerships, but how do you manage to do this, especially with remote teams? Well, there are several ways to accomplish this. What should you do and how do you do it? Well, you can check their social media website or if you can spare this, then you should, their physical offices. And most importantly, have a chat with the owners or executive management from who you'd get the most insights regarding this. For more details, insights on how to assess these factors in your prospective outsourcing partners, then you should check out our article, Picking an Outsourcing Provider, Company Culture as a Make or Break Factor, and how to assess it. So, in conclusion, if you can tick all of the items in this 
So as a conclusion, if you can tick off all the items in this checklist, then you'll have a pretty good chance of building a killer remote team in the Philippines. And if you properly nurture the partnership once you find the right tech partner, then you'll raise your odds of keeping that remote team for the long haul as well. Is it too good to be true? Not really, because all this will involve a lot of research, hard work, and taking action on carefully collected insights about outsourcing. But it's all up to whether or not you're willing to do the grunt work in order to get the results you want. So, are you? If you're ready and still have doubts or questions about anything on this list, feel free to get in touch with me at fred.arganis.com and I'd be happy to help. And please don't forget to subscribe for more episodes. See you next time.